guess it's the difference between success and perfection, isn't it? It's relative success. Mm. A- absolutely. When you when you look at England's history. We've got one from Phil on X. It says, The narrative that has been created around Southgate is one of squandered opportunities and an inability to match tactics against the elite in Europe. Show some fucking respect. (laughs) (laughs) If England had won the penalty shootout, it's not Phil's opinion, against Italy, uh, would there be a completely different narrative? Thank you. I'll take this one. Um, oh, will you? Yeah, I I think it has been a succession of squandered opportunities. Right. I think the reason that England have persisted with him, though, is because the country is in, wrapped in this, you know, in this woke again, if you will. Woke again. And, <laughs> and, and I would say the sooner we see the back of him, the better. All right. You just have to. We just have to. I endure, know you want him at Manchester United. To, we just have to endure one more summer of pain, uh. and then we can undo. Like when you know another government comes in, we can undo and unstrip all the all the terrible work he's done. Uh. Right. And that's the that answer. So I've got another question here from Jamie. <laughs> I know you want to at Manchester United as soon as possible. I I think so uh, because of the nature of this. I, I, like I, I I do actually genuinely want to want to kick this off. Okay. Because I think the I, the even just the use of the word narrative. I, I totally get where where Phil's coming from here, but the narrative comes from a place where Gareth Southgate got people in back into a wanting to support the England team mm. and B, wanting to play for the England team. Yep. Yeah, two important points. And because of his longevity, there is, a, the, you know, there is a conversation being had at the moment about whether this is it for him, whether this should be it for him and this, that and the other. To the extent that because it's sort of a period of time that we're broadly unused to, that the FA and Southgate himself have had to come mm. out and say, look, let's reassess this at the end of the summer. Mm. And fundamentally, with with what he's created, a lot of players have come through. I still think there is a conversation to be had about the tactics and whatever, and it will probably come to a head this summer. Mm. And I feel like that's when we can purely judge him. Because from my point of view, broadly, this has been a huge success. It's been the best time being an England fan. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Your, I, 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 I would, I would be, be like, you know, I was, uh, you know, I was, you know, footballingly sentient to a point in '96. Yep. But no, I, I would agree with that. If it's been better than Euro '96, I think Euro. No, no, sure. But what I'm saying is that would be that would be a period that people, yeah, yeah, you know, totally, people, totally, people yeah, romanticise yeah. and stuff like that. But yeah. yeah, I don't think that changes the question about no, it tactics. Doesn't. But yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Well, to answer the question very simply and directly, I think the answer is actually yes, and I think that when when he Phil says the narrative, there is a narrative. There, I'd say there's two basic narratives here. The one that Vish talked about there with those two points um, and then the narrative that Phil has described here. Yeah, I, th- I think that's probably uh, maybe the a slightly better way of putting it. The fact that it's not the narrative, it's a narrative. It's a narrative, yeah. And I, but I think had England won that penalty shoot against Italy, then I don't think... Well, obviously, the narrative of squandered opportunities wouldn't be there because they'd have taken that one. No. And that's the thing. The, the finest of margins um, in, in football, of course. I think, though that the nature of the game in that Euros final with England trying to just sit on a one goal lead for so long and then when it went one all England never looked like getting a second I mean you could argue Italy didn't either um, I, I think it's not just the fact that oh it was a penalty and it, it, it didn't go our way or England's way should I say uh, I think it was the the, 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 the way the, the match played out so I think that's that's what it is because if England had won a tournament under Southgate then any of the doubters would just be immediately pointed to that. Mm. It doesn't mean to say that you can then turn up at the World Cup and be absolute rubbish. But I mean, when Italy went out, um, or didn't qualify rather, for the World Cup in Qatar, yes. you had a lot of people saying, well, to be honest with you, I'd rather have won the Euros and then not qualified. Like, if, if you see what I mean, I would swap the, the hand that Italy have been dealt there rather than... Well, that's quite world. an unlikely hand to be repeated. Course, well, it's a, yeah. it's a pointless thing to say, yes. but that's how much people want... England fans want to see a trophy win because it's been obviously been completely um, sparse since uh, 66 and that's just that's the one victory. So, yeah. and I th- But I think that, and you often make this point and perhaps you will now, although I'll, I'll leave that to you, is that the, the margins are so fine at international football to kind of, it's it's not a league format and and yeah. and the tournaments are so kind of 
you know, few and every every couple of years. So I think this has been a period of success that Vish talks about. But of course, success in its truest and fullest form is with a trophy win. And that's the only thing. I guess it's the difference between success and perfection, isn't it? It's relative success. Mm. A- absolutely. When you when you look at England's history. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't say in terms um, of in terms of tournament results, it, it, it is unequivocally a success. Yeah, I mean, the, well, the that's, lacking, that's just not debatable, is it? Well, I mean, they're lacking the trophy. I mean, again, but you look at the three. But, but like you know, well, only, you only, only, do, only two teams can win the. Yeah, well, of course, all you can do trophy, in yeah. any cup competition mm. is put yourself in a position where you can win it. And, yeah. and that, has, that has been done in a couple of tournaments where yeah. habitually England have not done that in international Well, and also people forget about Russia 2018. I know it's a number of years ago oh, now. I, that's exactly it's, one of the ones that I had in mind. Actually. Exactly, because yeah. it, was, it was the only tournament genuinely that I've ever known. And I came in, my football sentence began in 1990, but then in terms of media and, and all mm-hmm. that kind of chat, mm. it would be probably 96. Because um, it didn't make it in 94 and who remembers Euro 92. Um it was the only tournament genuinely where the expectation was incredibly low. People used yeah. to say mm. in the tournaments building up to that, well, I think the expectation's really low, so I think that's a good thing for England, so I think they'll do well. You think you realise how you've just undermined your own yeah. statement there. But it genuinely wasn't. It was kind of like a free hit, and it was the, probably the most enjoyable tournament, actually, um, when we had a bit of glorious failure at the end, although it was, it was slightly disappointing. But, but France would have definitely won whoever was the winner of that game against Croatia in England, which, of course, it was Croatia. So I, I think that, it, that Phil is right to point out that the fact that it was at home as well, although home advantage, specifically international football, is actually tends not to be the advantage you actually might think it is, just statistically. Mm. It can be, but in terms of finals and the actual crucial moments, not, and France themselves know about that, of course. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, there, there, are, there are a couple of sides to this, really. I think, um, firstly, the thing about, the, the point that Phil makes about had England won the penalty shootout, I think that's really important, in that a lot of, I, I've definitely discussed this before, but a, a lot of, uh, football discussion and framing of what happened in football is essentially dishonest because we frame it mm-hmm. um, by results rather than what actually happened. Yeah, in even the, a moment, in, which in is why game. I wanted to extrapolate that out. To yeah, the full game. I, I think I think that's right. The the other thing is the the point that you kind of touched on about um, England's tactics in the final, which I th- I think is is a fair point yeah. in terms of the fact that England were trying to sit sit on the the lead or England. Another way of looking at that is England went out the traps really quickly and just ran out of gas. Yeah. Because th- that is not a Southgate thing, actually. No. That is an England thing yeah. going back several coaches and arguably generations. Which because is also the thing because, because you have such a different way, cycle of players, but it's yeah, still there. Yeah, but that, 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 <clears> that it, it takes a while for the characteristics of the t- of a national team mm. to change because of the sort of players that are being produced. Yeah. That is something that happens over generations. So that very Premier league way mm. that England have habitually played mm-hmm. in major tournaments come out of like really quickly and then after an hour they've got nothing left. Because in the spirit of the Premier League and some big games in Europe, obviously the recent ones as well, England might have been better off going behind early on. And then sort of trying to roll their way back into it. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that is your chaos theory. That is know, an argument, but but, but yeah. like people, people, people will because their games at the thick end of a tournament. Mm. People look at Italy, they look at the Croatia semi final in 2018, mm. and go to Southgate problem. That is demonstrably untrue. Mm. If you look at the history of English football or England in tournaments yeah. over 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 the last 20 years or so, I think the, the other the other thing is if we're going to get really into the, the the weeds of the question, an inability to match tactics against the elite in Europe, and a lot of people will say that. Where is the elite in Europe? Well, yeah, because yeah. if you're talking about Gareth Southgate, the idea that oh we've only got Gareth Southgate, all right, where are the other uh, well, amazing international coaches? There aren't amazing international coaches because they're coaching in the club, and game also as because well, international football has changed. But in that game as well, Roberto Mancini, far more celebrated and and experienced and successful coach than Southgate, mm. lest we forget. They didn't beat England. Yeah, they yeah. were sort of fairly. It was a scrappy goal they scored, and fair enough, they were pressing. But they didn't. It, bearing in mind an England defence, which you know has been criticised a lot in in the past, mainly because of Maguire and so on, did hold Italy at arm's length for a large part of that game. And I know it's all kind of silly, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, vacuous stuff now. But I mean, and I guess that's a, that's a, that's another question as well. Would you refer to Mancini as an elite coach or a very good coach? Yeah, ex- exactly. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, that's a really good point. That I mean, you've just cut to the core of it. There, Italy mm. didn't beat England. Yeah, and Italy in, in, in you know, and, and the semi final against Spain, people would have said that Spain were actually the better side. You know, but again, yeah. Italy showed their canniness, and again, it's yeah. called canniness because they won the penalty shootout. Yeah. They yeah. lose that penalty shootout. Now, I understand you can be good at penalties. There is an element of good fortune. The keeper guesses the right way, and so on, or or you know. You, you just miss hit it, but it is a demonstrable skill. So I don't want to start. Oh, it's a lottery. It's not a lottery, um, but you know, a bad team can beat a good team on penalties. Whereas over ninety minutes, it's less likely. So, but it's called canniness from Italy because they ended up beating Spain, or of course, on another day. They're, they're crafty on the continent as well, aren't they? Very they're crafty. They're crafty. <laughs> Can't pull in Saka back and so on. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, and well, of course. Now, I mean, that was not crafty, was it? Well, of course, no. Of course. Now, <laughs> if he grabbed the collar of the shirt, you know, if he's trying to rip that flag off, then we would be for it, wouldn't we? Um, if you know what I mean. Uh, let's move on to another question quickly. Uh, this one's from Tim, one of our patron subscribers, who emailed us. Uh, US listener here who recently got into soccer, his words, not mine, at club level, and don't know much about the international scene. But I'm so pumped for the World Cup in 2026. Who is the defining international team in football history? Great question. Does he mean a one-off team or a, a or a team full stop? It's a good question. Like an iteration you, of a team. I think you should interpret it how you see fit. Okay, because my impulse is Brazil. In, but, and specifically 1970 Brazil. But, but, but then, like... All of them. But the reason why it's specifically 1970 Brazil, as we know the debate in Brazil has been that teams post then have been essentially trying to recapture that. Yeah. 1982, they had a bit of that, but they didn't win. Dunga in 94, when he's shouting at the journalists, when he lifts the trophy, mm. um, and he's swearing away, apparently, he's like, oh, I told you I could do it because he's an unfancied player and yeah. not typically Brazilian. They've And, and you know, 2002 wasn't celebrated like a sort of classic Brazil side, but there was an element of it, you could well, say. Well, 98 was a classic Brazil side. You could argue that, but obviously they didn't win. No, but, but so this is, this is why, where my answer is rooted in. Obviously, they, mm. you know, they have won World Cups and stuff like that. Mm. But they are the quintessential inter- international team because off the back of those victories... Yep. They basically formed a cult, didn't they? Yeah, kind like of. A, a, a global mm. cult for well, a country is, is a remarkable thing to do. It's, yeah, it's one thing yeah. Real Madrid and Barcelona are doing it. <laughs> yeah. But mm. but for for a team to have people enamoured with their mm. style of play yep. to the point where kids now yeah. would want to buy like a an early Brazil shirt. Sure. Like it's been cu- become part of like bloke core, if you can call it Despite that. Despite them not having it. won the, the, the World Cup for 20 years. But the reason why I think Brazil and specifically 1970 is because it's the first World Cup in colour, mm-hmm. which is a, it was a huge thing. Yeah, it's yes. considered almost the apex of football still, isn't it? Totally, yeah. yeah. And all this sort of thing, Pelé's involved one of the most celebrated players of all time, maybe the most, you could you could argue. Um, they win it, they play incredible football, and and that is still seen as something that they hark back to in Brazil. Now, every country's guilty of hark back to 66 in this country for crying out loud. So that's why I think that you can talk about the other teams that have, that have come after they're still trying to get an essence of 1970. Yeah, and I think the thing is, that it, as, you, as you say, Marcus, quite rightly, 1970 and Brazil 70 are a massive turning point in Brazilian football and football in general. Mm. But sometimes not for the reasons that you quite think. Mm. Because we think of it, we think of the, the fourth goal in the final mm. and think of, mm-hmm. oh, well, that's the ultimate expression of this beautiful team game. But actually... Brazil are ahead of the curve because they get the shit kicked out of them at the 1966 World Cup. Yeah. And they think, right, that's not going to happen to us yeah. again. Yeah. And they become really the first international team to lean into strength and conditioning and mm. all that sort of stuff in the build-up to 1970, yeah. which, which is extraordinary. And so we think of it as the technical apex, mm. but actually mm. at that time... Yeah. It's the physical apex it's a really good point of, to make of, that, yeah. of football as well. And that really starts. But I, I don't know. I think like what Vish was saying about like how it, how it creates a cult, I think that's really important because you could argue that up until that point, and maybe past that point, England is the home of football. England is the birthplace of football. Mm-hmm. But now a lot of people and people all over the world, and even some people in England, mm. would say that Brazil is the spiritual home of football. When you've got the 2014 World Cup, yeah. like people are like, 
oh, can there be anything better yeah, yeah, than yeah, a World yeah. Cup in Brazil? And I tell you what, when I was at the last World Cup in Doha, I went to the first Brazil game. Yeah, talking of homes I, of football. I played, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I went. I went to the the first Brazil game they played against Serbia, where you know Richarlison scores that in, incredible yeah, goal, yeah, yeah. and. There was definitely a feeling. I mean, there was a weird feeling in a lot of the stadiums. And you often get that at World Cups. And I'm really interested, and uh, maybe, Tim, you can keep an eye on this for us, what the atmosphere will be like at the US World Cup in, in 2026. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, you found this particularly in the last two World Cups, there's a little bit of international friendly feel actually to, yeah, the, I know what you to mean. the atmosphere in the stadium yeah, definitely yeah because you don't have especially to russia and qatar which are difficult for people to get to expensive mm. for people to get to it's, it's it's you don't really get that sort of massive traveling fans or partisanship mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. with the exception of a few nations mm. whereas when you go into th that that stadium in, in in doha for brazil versus serbia there is a feeling of fuck me we're all here yeah. watching Brazil yeah. at a World yeah, Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't this amazing? Yeah. And uh, th like the feeling that you get off that, mm. off, off the crowd, is something quite different. But again, going back to, if, if we're talking about the defining international teams. Yeah, there's a couple more in, in, to mention. In, 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 in terms of Europe, I mean, we talked before about how, like, you know, it's sort of getting the result of a game and justifying everything from there yeah, is, yeah. Is, is not really like the truth. Mm. I think the 1974 Netherlands side is is Ooh. absolutely pivotal. I don't, Cause I, I, we're, we're, there's a difference between successful and influential. No, it's, it's too hipster. It's too hipster. It's not a hipster. It's Johan Cruyff. No, no, no. It, nowadays it's seen, it, it would be a bit of a hipster's choice. I get what you're saying, but it, it, you've got, we have to mention Spain. They won yeah, three yeah. tournaments in a row. Like yeah. that's that would be way more. Like look at the influence of the they're, style they're, of play they're that Guardiola modern had. Modern defining team. Modern defining yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely right. Now, it, it's, I, I think this is sorry to interrupt there, but I think this is a great conversation you two are having here because thanks. it really touches on what you see as defining. Because I think from a football perspective, Marcus, mm. you're absolutely right. From Tim's perspective, I, I think it, it is actually based on. A, a kind of heritage that goes beyond a style of play. Yeah, I, 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 Spain's a funny one because I, I think I think Spain aren't spoken about in that way because of Barcelona. Possibly because it's identified as Barcelona. But it's, but it's also too recent. I think. I think in in, in years to come, you know, yeah, people often appreciate right. stuff when it's maybe when it's yeah, back. yeah. I mean, no, none of us were alive for Netherlands seventy four or this you know, Brazil seventy for crying out loud. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's revered. You said when Franz Beckenbauer died, he's one of those Mount Rushmore players, yeah, yeah. which is a brilliant way of putting it. Mm. And and you're absolutely right. And I think sometimes the 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 seductiveness of it all, if that's a word, is um is the fact that you haven't you weren't there to see it. Yeah. Or you yeah. know the people who are talking it's about like it. It's like digging in the crates, isn't it? Kind of. And, yeah. and, and you get and, taught about history and those historical figures are up there. Absolutely. Immediately, absolutely. And they right. never go any lower. Yeah. Now the difference is nowadays I think there's so much footage um and 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 things look uh, you know, in the modern era things World Cups aren't, aren't 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 treated perhaps as as the way they used to be due to um, you know so much footage you know Champions League Champions people League, saying yeah. is a better standard of football when it when it gets to the crunch uh, one it, it, us knowing a lot more about other football from from abroad whereas mm. World Cups back in the day were like hang on who is this team from abroad we've not seen this style of play it was more exotic you could argue you've lost that but do, do you know what. I think I think the World Cup gives the same feeling because uh, yeah, the thing possibly, is we're possibly. we're sitting in there. And I think this is especially important with 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 Tim's question as someone who who recently mm. got into soccer. I think it's really easy to sit in a room like this and thinking of of us who talk about football for a living. You know what defines football for us and what defines you know, international yeah. football for mm. us. But the whole point about international football. It's not just for people who are into football. Well, and, and also people it's, from it's, other parts of the world. It's a global event that yeah. grabs people. And in an era where you don't really get mm -hmm. like water cooler television for want, sure. of, want of a, a, a better expression because, you know, you have on demand, which is how most people watch television and, mm -hmm. you know, they watch what they like when they like. To have a global sporting event that grabs people, like, even more than the Olympics. Of course it does, yeah. It's... It's, no, you, it's, it's remarkable, and that endures about that's the a world good, That is a good. That's a good thing, and also in different cultures, different countries, they they might have slightly different answers. I think Brazil is the answer 
to the question. There's maybe one or two others. You could have Argentina in there as well because of Maradona and now Messi. Um, but yeah. but Argentina, due to the nature of how they conduct themselves and how they celebrate, they're a much more divisive team than say Brazil. Well, now, with the, both of those, you're talking about defining individuals, really. There's that who but, happen to play for the same nation. Fine, but it, but yeah, um, but but two of the most celebrated individuals, along with Pele, and maybe mm. or perhaps no one else, maybe um, have been the most celebrated footballers of all time. But I think the thing about Brazil is it's certainly perceived outside of South America, or maybe within South America as well, is, is the fact that, you know, that whole Samba thing, and again, 90s, they look like they're enjoying themselves and they look like they're everyone's second team and, are oh, you're happy to see them win because they look like a, a bunch of happy-go-lucky type of guys. The fact is that they're a bit rough and ready on the pitch as well, as we know, and 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 like a bit of shit shithousery as much as the next team. And Argent- winning all, is all that counts for them. Well, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 Which is often over. Whereas in Argentina, Argentina are very happy for everybody to know they're a bunch of shit houses. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so, therefore, they're a bit more slightly more device, uh, divisive and they've they've had uh, fewer cup wins world cup wins than, than brazil but uh, i mean i mean if you really want to go back you know the 1950s hungarian side would be in there that's I, but i think that's what you're talking about that's the, that's the history that's the mm. you, you sort of chronological order of these great teams and, and influencing styles but i think in terms of the masses i think we answered it brazil is is the one so um vish you've got the final question i do and it's from jamie if and this is a monumentally big if scotland get far in the euros could the bagpipe become the new global sensation as Vuvuzelas did? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't think so because I'm sure the bagpipes are much harder to play. Oh, I was going to say they're more difficult to mass produce cheaply. A hundred percent. This is this is the thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you, you don't always, want a cheap bagpipe. You always think like a capitalist, then. It's, it's quite. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. It's, <laughs> it's quite funny how at the Brazilian World Cup in 2014 that we're already talking about. They they tried to kind of piggyback on the. Uh, Vuvuzela, they had this thing called a, a, ca- a cashinha. Right. Yes. A cashinha, can you believe it? Uh. Just because it's got an X on it, <laughs> it's still coming from FIFA. Yeah. And it's, it's this little kind of uh, egg shaped <laughs> thing with a knobbly outside, like a uh, wood chip wallpaper, mm. which has got sort of perforated things on the side and it's got a handle on it and you mm. kind of like shake it. Oh, yeah. I, I, All right. I, I know what you mean. I'm glad yeah. you said shake it there with that little hand gesture. <laughs> Um, <laughs> what would be? I'm trying to think. What would be the easiest? Can thing Can I for... say with the Vuvuzelas, by the way, that that uh, very early on um, in in the the life of the football ramble, just a few years after we, I'm just we terrified began, that you're about to get one out. Uh, well, Andy, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, don't mind me and my Vuvuzela. I do own a couple actually. We um, went over to to South Africa to to Joburg for the final. To, we didn't go to the final, but we did a bit of stuff around it and and, and so on. And obviously a lot of people had been complaining about that constant noise that you could hear on the television when the games were playing. And some people saying, oh, is that the right, is, is, you don't get the atmosphere the same of people singing and chanting or whatever it may be. There were, there were criticisms, rightly or wrongly, yeah, whatever you may yeah. think, there were, there were criticisms. And we got there and as soon as you bought one, you were like, yeah, brrr, it was absolutely <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> we were like, this yeah. is it, this is absolutely it. It was super. They're quite, they're, they're more difficult to play than you, you might imagine the Vuvuzelas. You've really got to give it plenty. And, and so it gave me a complete uh, new appreciation of, of how much lung capacity and power some no, of but it's, the it's uh, technique surely it's, it's, it's like it's like a trombone or a french horn isn't it it's, it's, it's not alright I it's pro- not about, appreciated the technique it's, not, it's not about power is it well, I, I imagine well, you, you, must, d- you must be able to play the bagpipes match, a bit much right? like Brazil 1970 you? Andy you've got to have the technique and the power yeah <laughs> can, can you play the bagpipes yeah, of course I can't you've got to blow and give and do it at the right time <laughs> <isn't you? laughs> exactly but you've got to get to half time uh, yeah um, yeah, so I, I I don't think the bagpipes will become that, but you never know. You never know. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just too expensive. It's just too expensive. I think there's too I much really going like... on. I think with the Vuvuzela, give us one. Yeah. Here. It was only a few quid. You know, you, as long as your technique and your, and your lung capacity is, is all right, you'd be able to go for hours and hours, uh, quite quite frankly. Were well, you were going to say that there, was there another instrument you were going to try and... I was trying to think what, I mean, what would be... Drums are quite popular, but I mean, they're quite sort of universal. Universal, like, yeah. With a lot yeah, of but you kind of ask what would be in, like an English... What would be an American instrument that you'd be able to oh, Mass- bring in just shoot a gun in the air can you oh come on yeehaw <laughs> outrageous I'm what sorry about, Tim and everybody a banjo a banjo yeah. nah I, I just think I you think... need to be good but what I'm saying is like, there's the too much equipment Vizella. electric yeah. guitar playing like stadium rock I yeah. would think or, or um, decks and then you know two turntables and a microphone 
You kind of need to, <laughs> it would be, I suppose one of the things about um, American soccer in particular is that they, they lean a lot on English tradition in, in some ways. You're welcome. So, you know, the, the is it the Rattlers? The Rattlers, Gordon Yeah, Bennett. like maybe those. They were outlawed at English grounds for good reason. They were outlawed. Probably, if they weren't, they should have been. Nobody has a rattle these days. No, I think they would. Uh, well, they have a fucking chainsaw in MLS, don't they? Yeah, but not here. Yeah, but what I'm saying is for the World Cup, what would be the equivalent of the World Cup thing going forward? Those those clappers you get at Fulham. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. If anyone's on, uh, unfamiliar. Well, yeah. of course, they've got a, a proud um, uh, American heritage, Fulham, don't they? So. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't say heritage, but they've got an, an American owner. Or he's certainly an American citizen, yeah. And a set oh, back. What, 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 yeah. And, and a number of uh, players, yeah. And a legendary He's talking about player. London's oldest football club here. I don't Clint think, Dempsey. Yeah. It, was, it was the anniversary of the... the, the a Juventus game this week, wasn't oh, it? Oh, it was indeed, everybody. Yeah, it was, would, would be, you would, Fulham wouldn't be a thing without Americans. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> yeah, absolutely true. What a way to finish, everybody. Thank you, America. <laughs> God bless you, Big Sam. Um, or Uncle Sam, not Big Sam. <laughs> be clear about that. Freudian slip. Always with the England. <laughs> Always with the England. Big Sam's probably someone's uncle. Hey, Uncle Big Sam has only managed one more game for England than Uncle Sam. And that's a fact, everybody. That's a fact. Uh, thank you very much for listening to the Football Ramble Mailbag, part of the ACAS Creator Network. We're back on Monday, of course, with a brand new a Ramble. In the meantime, follow us on X. TikTok, YouTube and Instagram at Football Ramble and follow us on Spotify too. Thank you, Andy. Grazie mille. Thank you, Vichy. Thank you. Mille, another man who has a chainsaw. Javier, Argentina president. And thank you very much, everybody. We'll see you soon. Cheers for watching another fantastic clip from the Football Ramble podcast. Make sure you click like on this video and subscribe to the channel, which means you will not miss a single upload.